How's it going everybody? And welcome back to another pool coaching video. For those of you out there that might be new to my channel, what I like to do with these videos is that pool players out there that are interested in improving their game record themselves playing through two or three racks of eight ball and they send them to me for me to watch and analyze and see what type of advice I can offer them to help improve their game. I watch the racks uninterrupted, except I might mention a comment here and there, or at least provide some commentary through their racks. But at the end of each rack, I'll go back to what I think are key areas that I can hopefully offer some type of advice that they could use to hopefully help improve their game. And today, I'd like you to meet Lonnie. Now, Lonnie is a fellow Texan like myself, who also happens to have their own YouTube channel, Backwards Billiards, which I'll happily provide a link to in the description below. Now, Lonnie comes to us as an APA skill level five, and he's going to be playing through three racks of eight ball. So let's see what we can do to help him out. All right, Lonnie, show us what you got with this first rack. Okay, we had a nice head-on break there. We got a decent spread. And it's just unfortunate that we broke dry. So that is player one's turn. And now as player two, what is going to be your opening shot? Okay, so player two is going to be solids, taking the five ball into the side pocket. It looks like you're sizing up for the three ball. All right, so it didn't look like you got a whole lot of cue ball movement out of that, so I'm not sure what you're going to do next here. You can at least see the one ball, so you might be able to cut it into the upper left corner pocket. And that looks like what you're trying to do. Oh, we just undercut the ball. All right, so now back over to player one that's going to be with stripes. And stripes is nicely opened now, as well as solids. Oh, that 13 ball looked like it was going to drop. You just barely missed the combination. So now back over to solids, which it doesn't look like you have a whole lot. I mean, you have the four ball right next to the cue ball, but what can you do with it? Ooh, nice try there with a long cross corner bank shot. But now, unfortunately, we have that three ball clutter there for player two. Player one's now in a good position to try to dominate the table with their stripes. Nice combination there. It didn't really matter if the 11 ball fell or not. Just one less ball to worry about. Oh, that's unfortunate. I don't think you wanted to catch the nine ball the way that you did. I think that's why you ended up missing the shot. I think you just wanted to hit the 15 ball all by itself. So what do we do here? Looking at the clutter, so maybe a 1-4 combination. Yep, that's what it was. Good shot. We look pretty lined up for the seven ball and we'll have natural position on the one ball. Oh, we just didn't have enough pace on the cue ball. It looks like you were trying to come all the way around to get position on the two ball to go into the upper right corner pocket, but now it looks like you're going to have to bank the two ball cross side. Ah, almost got the two rail bank there. Okay, good shot there. You have a variety of options that you can do from here. Okay, 
Okay, 15 ball into the upper left corner pocket. Do we just roll the cue ball forward for the 10? Yep, that looks like what you're doing. So where do you plan on playing the eight ball from here? We can see that the 14 ball is going to be your last ball. You have plenty of options on where you can place the cue ball there. And it looks like we're going to play the eight ball into the lower right corner pocket. This will be player one for the win on rack one. Nicely done. Okay, so I think that was a total of three innings that it took for you to be able to complete this rack, which is actually not bad. We do have a couple of spots that I did see that we can take a look at. So let's go have a look. Now here's the first spot I'm going to comment on in rack one, and it's going to be with your break. Now it's got nothing to do with the fact that you broke dry, but it looks like you got a whole lot of stuff going on here when you break. So we're going to watch this really slowly. So I'm just going to move piece by piece, frame by frame. And so right here, do you see yourself already starting to move a little bit closer to the cue ball so that you can strike and then watch your elbow as it moves off to the right and you actually strike the cue ball at a slight angle. Let me pull this back a bit just so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do now is watch it again here and right about here. I'm going to draw a straight line through your cue, through the cue ball to kind of show what the follow through should look like. And then we're going to play it again through very slowly. So right here, you pull back, you start to approach the cue ball. You can see your bridge hand is scrunching up as you're moving a little bit closer. Watch your right elbow swing out, which means you're coming in at an angle. And then look where your cue actually ends. Just slightly off to your left of what I thought would have been a straightforward follow through. So we've got some movement there that is clearly happening before you strike the cue ball. And Lonnie, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know the issue that I have with this is you're not going to be hitting the cue ball exactly where you think you might be. On top of, you're also driving your cue down into the table. So not only are you moving to one side, you're also driving your cue down into the table. So I'd be curious how many times you might have accidentally miscued on the break as well, since you're doing this type of movement when you're doing your break, especially if you're going to break with some power. So all I really can advise at this point here is now that you're aware of this type of movement, just try to fix it all by moving a little less. Now, a lot of people out there might want to comment, well, the pros do those types of movements as well as far as like standing up or they might even jump or kick their hind leg up or anything like that. And that's all well and good, but I don't really like to make comparisons for us average pool players to the pro pool players because they spend hours upon hours perfecting their technique. And I don't think it's really a fair comparison to an average pool player that really doesn't spend that amount of time trying to perfect their technique. So this is me just piecing apart little things here and just saying, you know what, try to remain as still as possible. Let your arm do the work and try to make sure that your follow through is straight through the cue ball. So that way all the power that you're actually intending on putting into the cue ball is actually transferred into the cue ball, as well as making sure that you're exactly hitting on the cue ball where you want to. This is the next spot I wanted to comment on. This is just after breaking dry as player one, and now as player two, before you left the table as player one, you start to observe the table. And I wanted to ask, what exactly are you observing at this point here? Are you looking for your opening shot? Or are you looking for your opening shot plus a run out, or at least a potential run out? Because if you're looking for a run out, I would have expected to see you maybe do a couple of laps around the table so that you can view all angles of every ball to see what pockets they could possibly go in. Because I just don't think that's possible to do it from one viewpoint just standing at the head of the table. Because after you observe the table here, you went and grabbed your cue, came back and shot. So if you're just looking for an opening shot, of course that's fine. But we know that the opening shot is not the only thing that occurs. You have to start planning afterwards. And so even with the opening shot, 
I still would have expected you to maybe do one or two laps around the table so that way you can maybe do a three to four ball run out or possibly an entire run out. Now to continue on from my previous comment, this was your opening shot after observing the table from the head of the table. You shot the five ball here into the side pocket. Your cue ball bumped into the one ball, and I think your cue ball landed somewhere right around here to which you shot the three ball, and then you had very little cue ball movement to where you had to try to back cut the one ball into the upper left corner pocket. We just undercut it and end up missing. So the main reason why I said previously about observing the entire table is because, at least for me, in a retrospective fashion, I see a completely different pattern. What I see is to start with the two ball here into the corner pocket, and that should allow you to have some sort of better position that you can get on the one ball, even just from naturally rolling it, because the cue ball is automatically going to come into the side rail. You can possibly put just a touch of bottom spin if you want to make sure that it doesn't roll any higher, because you do want to shoot the one ball next, or I'm sorry, the five ball next into the side pocket, because then you naturally get position on the seven ball, and then you shoot the seven ball into the corner pocket, naturally get position on the one ball, shoot the one ball into the side pocket, and then with bottom spin, draw back almost the same position, maybe just a little bit further for position on the six. Do you see what the rest of the run out's gonna be? Play the six ball into the corner pocket, get position on the four ball to cut into the corner pocket, and then get position on the three ball. This is possibly done with some top right spin, shoot the three ball in because we already know that it goes because you previously shot it and you automatically will get position on the eight ball to go into the side pocket right a whole lot of mess of drawing but it does show you that from the opening shot that you had as player two i think if you would have taken just a little bit more time walked around the table and saw all the different angles that you could have done with each balls at least for solids you probably could have been able to spot this run out right here for this shot here, I wanted you to be able to see that the movement that I was talking about when you're breaking, you also have similar types of movement when you're actually shooting. So if we were to look and see how you're actually positioning yourself on the cue ball here, it would appear, at least from the camera angle, to be a center ball hit, maybe even a slight below center ball hit. But when I play this slowly, let's watch where your cue ends up. You come back and then watch your cue. It ends up much further down, again, kind of driving the cue down into the table. So where exactly did you strike the cue ball when you did that? Did you know that you were either striking in the center or because when you were driving your cue down into the table, did you start driving your cue down before you hit the cue ball and therefore you actually put a little bit of bottom spin on the cue ball? And it also doesn't look like you have much of a follow through, like you didn't even go completely through the, uh, through the cue ball. You just hit the cue ball and then stopped your cue as well as dip it down. Now, this stuff right here has nothing to do with why you missed the combination that you were trying to go for with the 14-13 ball. I think that's just simply because you missed aimed. But I do want to point out this little bad habit that you have here of moving your cue possibly before you strike the cue ball because as I've previously mentioned before, you're more than likely not going to strike the cue ball where I think you're intending on, which also could mean that you could be invoking some sort of side spin, which could cause the cue ball to deflect from one side of the other, etc., etc. Or at least in this shot here, if you did apply some bottom spin accidentally, you possibly could have done a drag shot, which is having the cue ball roll backwards. And on the way to the object ball, it starts sliding because the backspin dies out and then starts to roll forward. So try to be a little mindful of that. If you wanted to hit the cue ball with bottom spin, then your cue should be pointing at bottom spin, pull your cue straight back, and then accelerate your cue straight forward through the cue ball and make sure you actually go past the cue ball to actually have some sort of follow through just to make sure that you have a good clean hit. And this will be the final spot in rack one that I'm going to comment on. And we're still talking about the movement that you have when you're shooting. Because now with an open hand bridge on the rail, this is something that I very commonly see with an open hand bridge. Watch what you do when you shoot this shot. Immediately pick up your cue off of your bridge hand, which I have to ask the same exact question. When exactly are you doing it? Now, at least on this shot here, 
it did look like you did it well after you at least struck the cue ball. And because you're so close to the rail, you're automatically putting topspin on the cue ball. And therefore, if you did it afterwards, you're not putting any more topspin than you're probably intending on, let alone you're not risking miscuing if you start picking up your cue before you strike the cue ball, which is the danger that you can actually run with this type of movement here. So even when you're on the rail or not on the rail, if you're just using an open hand bridge, try to keep your cue in your hand and make sure you just go through the cue ball without any unintended movement. So that's all I have for you on rack one. Let's check out rack two. All right, Lonnie, here's rack two. You won rack one as player one with three innings. So we're off to a good start. Let's see how this one goes. Okay, this time we don't have a dry break. It looks like you made both solids and stripes. So from here, let's see what your opening shot is going to be. So here it kind of looks like the same thing. It looks like you might be trying to observe the entire table just from one viewpoint. So that's why I would highly suggest maybe at least walking around the table a bit to see everything. We take stripes and since we took stripes, that was an excellent shot right there because that ball being tied up next to a solid is certainly going to be a trouble spot and you dealt with it right away. So that was awesome. So I have to imagine from here, you're going to shoot the 14 ball with some follow to get position on that ball. Oh, but we rattled the ball. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Okay, so over to player two with solids. I mean, you even got the position that you were looking for. Okay, we back cut the six ball in. It looks like we wanted to run into the three ball, but I'm pretty sure we didn't want the three ball to end up where it ended up there. You wanted to be able to shoot it in the lower right corner pocket, so that's a bit unfortunate. Looks like we're going to have to use the two as a backup shot all the way up to the upper right corner pocket, but we undercut it. So what do we do from here? We're pretty lined up with that 11 ball. Do we just hold the cue ball for the 9 ball? That's what it looks like. Okay, bit of a stun shot there for the 14 ball. There we go, we got it this time, and we got the position that we were looking for. I think this is the 12 ball. Have the cue ball follow up a bit so we can get past the 7 ball and see the 8 ball. Yep, just like that. 8 ball, lower right corner pocket. That's where you played it on the last rack as well. Oh no, we overcut the ball. That's unfortunate. Man, that was such a good run from there too. All right, so do we try to finish this off with solids? What do we do from here? Okay, nice shot with the one ball there. We bump the four ball into another position where we can shoot the four and the seven into the same lower left corner pocket. Ooh, but we caught the four ball full and made the four ball go into the rail. So now, again, eight ball, lower right corner pocket as player one. There it is. Okay. Well, geez, you kind of sped through that one pretty quickly there. I think that only cost you two innings on that one there, so we're currently at a total of five. We still have a couple of spots even in this rack, though, that we can look at. So let's go. Here's the first spot in rack two that I wanted to comment on. This looks like this could have been a break and run for you, but when you shot this 14 ball here, you rattled it into the pocket as you were trying to get position with the 12 ball with some topspin. Now, the reason why I wanted to comment on this is because, in my opinion, I thought you hit that cue ball rather hard 
when the 14 ball really only has to travel, I'm assuming this is an eight foot table, it only had to travel about two and a half, maybe three feet, and then your cue ball has to travel about four feet just to get position on the 12 ball. So I, for one, am all about finessing the cue ball around and not necessarily forcing the cue ball around. Every once in a while in the game of pool, there will come a shot where you do have to try to force the cue ball around. But for the most part, you should be able to try to control the cue ball with finesse. So on this particular shot here, I would probably suggest a little bit more topspin than you already have on the cue ball. And then just hit the cue ball smoothly. And you should have been able to get the exact result that you were looking for. And the cue ball would have just floated its way on over here for position on the 12 ball, to which you probably could have proceeded with some sort of run out that would look like this. You play the 12 ball into the corner pocket. We get position on the 13 ball. Shoot the 13 ball into the corner pocket roll forward for position on the 11 ball and then probably try to draw underneath the eight ball here to get position for the corner pocket here. That's at least what I think you are probably going to end up trying to do. I just don't think you needed to hit this 14 ball as hard as you did. Here's the next spot that I'm going to comment on and this comment might be a little bit long with it because we have a couple of things that we can actually do here. This is just after rattling the 14 ball into the lower left corner pocket. And now as player two, you're about to shoot the six ball into the same lower left corner pocket. But I do want to emphasize again with, I think, the amount of power that you put into the cue ball because we saw the cue ball come over here, hit the three ball. The three ball hits the rail, bounces up, and I think hits the cue ball again because it proceeds to go forward. And then your three ball unfortunately landed somewhere right around here while your cue ball landed somewhere around here to which you had to resort to cutting the two ball into the upper right corner pocket. We just undercut the two ball. Now, in reality, I think you wanted to bump the three ball and have it roll over here so that we could shoot the three ball into the lower right corner pocket. And so the mistake there was your use of power. I think you could have just floated the six ball on in. It doesn't have very far to travel, even with the amount of cut you have to put on the six ball and just have the cue ball gently roll over here and then just bump into the three ball. The cue ball will most likely hit the short rail and then just bounce back up and land right here while your three ball is here and you would have had a clear shot at the three ball. Now, the other thing that I think you could have done, though, is you could have shot the three ball. If you just shoot this ball in, I think the natural rebound is going to cause the cue ball to come into the short rail and then bump into the eight ball like this, all depending upon the power that you put. The eight ball travels up table a little bit, but you'll have an easier access at getting to the six ball Plus, you have more access on the cue ball. You can shoot with bottom spin, top spin, left spin, or right spin because you won't be on the rail. Another thing that you could have done with the three ball here is put a little bit of, I think it's top left spin. So instead of coming this way, we come this way and we land somewhere right around here. And now we have a plentiful of options. We can shoot the two ball, we can shoot the one ball, or we can shoot the six ball. At least from the center of the table, after shooting the three ball, we have more options that we can actually deal with. So I think the point that I wanna make on this comment here is be mindful of the power that you're using, especially when the balls aren't really traveling a whole lot of distance. And then of course, be mindful of all the options that you can actually have before you take the current shot. This will be the final spot in rack two that I'm going to comment on. We were unfortunate and missed the eight ball in the lower right corner pocket as player one. Now as player two, you're about to shoot the one ball into the side pocket. And I think you had some bottom spin on this shot so that you can draw the cue ball over to the short rail. You came back up and bumped the four ball. The four ball landed over here. And then you tried to shoot the four ball into this corner pocket. You just hit the four ball too thick and caused the four ball to hit the side rail and then bounce away and miss. Then you were able to shoot the eight ball as player one into the lower right corner pocket. Now. From the camera angle that you've given me here, it does look like you were able to shoot the three ball into the corner pocket and your cue ball is going to bump into the two ball. So I probably would have shot this with some bottom spin, maybe even a touch of left spin. 
because then your cue ball is going to come over here and hit the side rail and then roll back out towards the middle of the table. And then now you have access to the one ball and the clutter of the three and the two is gone. Because if you were successful at making the four ball, which you did miss, you had position on the seven ball. Let's actually try to get to that spot there. You shot this in. And so right about here, let's say that the four ball went in. Look at the shot that you would have on the seven ball. You would have to try to drive the cue ball over to the three and the two and break it up or try to get position to be able to shoot the three ball into the corner pocket like I had indicated. But when we go back over here, you're already there. So that's why I would suggest taking it rather than trying to reposition yourself in order to be able to shoot the three ball. Now, of course, you're at the table, you have a better viewpoint, maybe the three ball can't be shot. At least from the camera angle that you've given me here, it does appear that the three ball can be made from where the cue ball is at, and that's why I would suggest it. So this is all I have for you on rack two. Let's take a look at the final rack. All right, Lonnie, two racks down, total of five innings. Let's see what you got for the final rack. Okay, I saw a stripe drop on the break there, and we got a really nice spread. It looks like maybe the 15 ball might be in trouble there, tied up next to the 1 and the 2. The 1 and the 2 kind of block the pass to be able to get position on it. Let's see how you try to piece apart this one. More than likely, you're going to start with that 9 ball staring at you. It looked like at least this time you had at least half a lap around the table. Instant position on the 11 ball, probably follow forward for a position on the 13 ball. Yep, and see this time you kept your cue in your hand. It's almost like you heard the previous comment before you even got to this rack. What do we do from here? Do we stun the cue ball? Do we draw the cue ball? What are we doing? Ooh, hmm. I think we might have slightly lost control there. I'm not sure if you wanted that type of result or were you trying to get position on the 12 ball. You can at least see the 10 ball here, so let's see what happens here. Oh, but we undercut. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That's an overcut. We overcut the 10 ball. All right, so back over to player two. Player two is going to be solids again. It looks like we're sizing up the four ball to go into the side pocket. Okay, good shot there. What ball are we trying to get position on? You had the five and the six right there in the natural path. You're staring at the two ball. Was that the ball that you were playing position for? It must have been. Good shot. Nudge the one ball out into the open there. Looks like maybe you were trying to get position on the seven ball, but you, I don't know, can you see it or is the eight ball blocking you? Because now you're looking down table. Okay, so maybe the eight ball blocks the path that you need to get to the seven ball. Looks like we're shooting the five ball. Nice shot there. But what ball were we trying to get position on there? It would have been ideal to get position on the one ball because now the one ball is kind of in trouble, wouldn't you say? It can't go into the upper right corner pocket. It can only go into the lower right corner pocket. But it looks like we tried to play the seven ball. We just did undercut that one. So now we're back over to player one. Okay, it looks like we're trying to come around. Maybe we wanted to play the 12 and the 15 ball in the same pocket as the 10 ball. But what do we do here? Do we try to play the 12 ball into the side pocket? Looks like that's what we did, but we had another overcut. So what do we have here? Looks like a 3-7 combination, maybe? Yep. Uh-oh. 
So what were we expecting there? Maybe we wanted to bump into that ball so that way we can have a clear path to shoot the one ball into the upper right corner pocket. Oh, nice shot. Good recovery being able to bank that ball. Looks like we have position on the three ball. Nicely done. Did it go in? Did it go? Oh, I guess. Oh, we just hung it up. Man. Just unable to finish. So do we finish the rack as player one again? Like we overhit that one. Still cut it though, right? Nice shot. Can we finish this off? And we do. Nicely done there. I think that was also another two inning rack there. So we have a total of seven innings for all three racks, which I think is freaking awesome. But I do have maybe a couple of spots that I saw on this one. So let's go back and take a look at them. Here's the first spot in rack three that I want to comment on. And this is what I believe to be a classic example of focusing more attention on what's going to happen after the shot rather than focusing on the shot at this point here you're going to try to shoot the 10 ball into the corner pocket and i believe you wanted the cue ball to run directly into the 15 ball and i think you paid more attention to getting this hit on the 15 ball than the actual 10 ball because you overcut the 10 ball and missed the corner pocket on its left side and your cue ball came over here to the side rail and i think it bumped into the 15 ball from this side so again, it's a classic mistake I think most players have made. I've certainly made it before to where I'm just more concerned about what happens after the shot because I want to still be able to run the table and I end up not paying enough attention to the current shot at hand and I end up messing up the shot, which is what happened here. So clearly always try to pay more attention to the shot at hand after you've done whatever type of planning you need to do to say, I want the cue ball to go over here and hopefully get a breakout. Now, on top of that though, I don't think you want the cue ball to run directly into the 15 ball. And here's why. The 15 ball looks like it's probably going to clip into the one ball and the one ball is gonna go like this and then your 15 ball is gonna go over here. And when it comes back, we don't exactly know how far back it's gonna come off of the side rail. And let alone when you hit the 15 ball, your cue ball probably comes like this. And we're just not entirely sure if we're going to get a shot, especially if the 15 ball crosses all the way back over and then lands over here next to the two ball or lands behind the two ball. Let alone if your cue ball is right here, you're not going to have a shot on the 12 ball. So the percentages of actually getting a shot afterwards just to me doesn't seem to be high enough to try a shot like this by directly running into the 15 ball. Instead, I think I would have probably suggested a little bit of bottom spin and trying to clip into the one ball like this. The one ball moves out of the way and this is not a hard shot, mind you. We don't want to just blast it because then we don't know where the cue ball is going to go. But if you clip into the one ball, your cue ball should draw out like this and you should have an open shot at your 15 ball, which then you try to manipulate the cue ball to get position on the 12 ball, maybe something like this. Shoot the 12 ball into the corner pocket and then try to draw back for position on the eight like so. When it comes to breaking out trouble spots, you don't just try to send the cue ball directly into the clutter. You have to really plan and be very specific about how the cue ball is going to enter into the clutter so that way you can have a better prediction on how the clutter is going to spread out. So at least in this case here, if you are able to clip the one ball, the 15 ball is not going to move. So we just want to make sure that the one ball doesn't hit the side rail and then come back in the way. 
that's why I mentioned about the power that you would want to use on this particular shot. You might have been able also to just maybe draw into the two ball and then have a shot on the 12 ball and then try to get position on the 15 ball. Not entirely sure if the 15 ball can be made into this corner pocket if you were able to shoot the 12 ball and then try to get position over here. So again, the main point though is I don't think you necessarily wanted to run into the 15 ball. It's a shot that you can certainly try and you might have been able to get position on the 15 ball afterwards. I just think the percentages were a little low versus trying to get the cue ball to clip into the one ball or let alone clip into the two ball and clip into the one ball if you were actually able to hit the two ball somewhere right around here with the draw shot. Then you would have moved both the two and the one ball, leaving your two balls alone, hopefully still leaving you a shot on the 15 ball. And this is going to be my final comment. At this point here, you're about to shoot the 10 ball into the corner pocket, and I think you had some top left spin, or maybe just some left spin on the cue ball, because we saw your cue ball do something like this and land over here, to where you had to try to cut the 12 ball into the side pocket. But in all actuality, I think you wanted the cue ball to hit the side rail and then come back out like this, so that you can have access to the 12 or the 15 ball in the same corner pocket. We just didn't hit it hard enough. But again, this is why I'm going to stress the amount of power that you put into this shot because if you look at the path that the cue ball was already going, had you just hit the cue ball softer, you could have landed somewhere right around here and be able to shoot the 15 ball down into this lower right corner pocket. And then if you do go a little bit farther, then you have the 12 ball in the same lower right corner pocket. Now, however, though, I don't think I would have put any left spin on the cue ball at all. Instead, just top spin. Cut the 10 ball thinner than what you did, so that way you hit the short rail and start heading up like this. And if you do fall short, you still have the 15 ball to go into the same lower right corner pocket. Otherwise, if you go past it too much, you have access to the 12 ball to go into the side pocket, which you can naturally get position on the 15 ball, draw back for the 8 ball in this corner pocket here. This goes with the principle that I've said before about keeping your cue ball movements small, which is easier to control, giving you a higher chance at being successful, which is why I would suggest this shot here rather than trying to move the cue ball around like you did. Now, if you would have made the 12 ball, you probably still would have gotten out. But since you were really trying to move the cue ball around, we didn't exactly get the position that I think that you are wanting, which probably contributed to why you weren't able to run out at this point in time. So do try to see if smaller cue ball movements are going to allow you to get the position on a ball to go into a different pocket. And if you so, you're going to see that you're going to be more accurate because smaller cue ball movements are easier to control. So Lonnie, this is what I have for you after these three racks of eight ball. You were able to finish everything off in a total of seven innings, which is really awesome and I think does show as a skill level five. You just made some small mistakes that I think practically everybody makes at any skill level. So I'd like to thank you for the opportunity you gave me to be able to review your game. I hope that the information that I was able to show you during these three racks of eight ball, you'll be able to use to further improve your game to get back to skill level six, because you did tell me that you did fall from skill level six down to skill level five. So hopefully now you'll be able to climb back up to skill level six and then push even farther to reach skill level seven. So viewers, what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with any of my points? And just like always, if there was any other types of options or advice you think you'd like to offer Lonnie here, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below with the timestamp of the shot and the other option, run out patterns or advice that you'd like to give. So if you like what you saw, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care everybody.